Hello everyone, welcome to our program today. I'm Lauren and I'm the coordinator of the Veterans Resource Center at Skyline College. We've been fortunate enough to build strong partnerships with CalVet's California Transition Assistance Program team members. We are excited that you have, ha you have the opportunity to hear about the wonderful resources and opportunities available through CalVet today. There will be some resources highlighted local to the SF Bay Area as well as state resources. So we hope there'll be something for everyone. And now I invite the CalVet California Transition Program team to begin. And thank you for that nice welcome, Lauren. And it's a very, it's a privilege to be here on behalf of the California Department of Veteran Affairs and our entire CalVet and CalTAP team. I want to thank Skyline College for allowing us to partner with us uh, to share this benefit uh, webinar for you today. Uh, and then again, also, I'd like to highlight that this is Veterans Day week. Uh, and I would like to uh, say happy Veterans Day to all the veterans out there and your family members. My name is Kirk Eller and I am a CalTAP training coordinator and we are gonna be providing some information on what your California benefits are today. Uh, with that being said, uh, we have some housekeeping rules that we'd like to go over. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Zoom functions, uh, there is a toolbar at the bottom of the page. And if you could please open up the Q&A tab and the chat tab. Uh, we will be putting some resource links in the chat. My colleague, Jana Adams, will be putting in some information as well as our resource book, uh, some informational links to uh, benefits uh, and maps as well. And then for the questions, you can address the Q&A tab. If you have questions throughout this webinar, please hit the Q&A tab. You can type it directly in there and we will address it at the end when we follow up with the Q&A. Otherwise, the subject matter expert may address it during the webinar. And now I'm going to talk about our CalTAP overview. A uh, little bit of history about myself. I'm a Marine Corps veteran. I served from 1986 to 1990 as a CH-53 helicopter crew chief. Uh, and when I exited the service, I started using my GI Bill under Chapter 30 Education, uh, and then I left a lot of those benefits on the table. And then I followed up years later with the Chapter 31 VRE or Veteran Readiness and Employment, uh, and then completed my degree in 2017 and came here to work at CalVet. So the CalTAP program was actually designed in, in, to inform and connect veterans of all eras of their earned federal and state benefits. Uh, and we wanna provide this continuum of care as those needs change over time, because those that are separating from the active duty military have different needs than what say a 20 year veteran after they've separated is gonna need. So once they separate, they're looking for different benefits, maybe education or a home loan or uh, employment. Whereas say an older veteran that's been out for 20 years, maybe looking to purchase another home or start a business or healthcare or stuff and things of that nature. So uh, we wanna make sure that we can provide that support and assistance as those needs change uh, through our five core, core five pathways. The first one is our core curriculum. And we're going to be going through the core curriculum today because that is where all of your specific California benefits are listed. Uh, we do also have other pathways for education, employment, entrepreneurship, and a fifth pathway for service providers for those of you interested in working or serving veterans. Uh, this is a high snapshot of what our Veterans Resource Book looks like. Um, my colleague, Jana, did put a link in the chat for the Veterans Resource Book, a, virtual, a, vid, a PDF version, as well as a link that you can download this uh, book. Uh, we don't have a hard copy, obviously, but if you do get to the uh, Veteran Resource Center, hopefully they have some hard copies at the Veteran Resource Center for you. So also I'd like to talk how, can you, how you can use CalTAP online. Uh, CalTAP with the virtual world that we live in now, um, websites are more useful and user-friendly than ever. Uh, this is what our CalVet homepage looks like. If you just did a Google search for CalVet, uh, it would be the first one that pops up. Just make sure it has the ca.gov address on it and know, know that it's a government agency. Uh, on the homepage of CalVet, there's a lot of information that you can find and navigate through. 
Uh, to get to the CalTAP portal though, you'll see that the CalTAP is highlighted there where the laptop, if you click on that link, that will take you to the CalTAP portal. And you're gonna see the five pathways. The first one that is listed there is the core curriculum, which is going to cover our California specific benefits. Also at the bottom of the page, there's a link for archived webinars. Uh, since the pandemic, we have done a lot of recorded webinars, a lot of them with Skyline College, um, but we've also recorded our webinars for future reference. So you can scroll through that archived uh, list of webinars and you can also visit our YouTube channel. We have a lot of uh, webinars on, on numerous topics at our YouTube channel. And I believe Jana will be putting that link in the chat as well. So let's uh, go through our core curriculum pathway. Uh, this is where you're gonna see 11 modules of the core curriculum. And these are self-paced modules with various topics from the introduction, uh, module two, understanding resilience, uh, module three, healthcare, four is for claims and compensation, and module five covers your California specific benefits. So we do encourage you to go through these modules at your own pace and learn about these different topics or resources that may be uh, useful to you. So module five, the California benefits. So what are your California benefits? California benefits cover in the book under chapter one. Uh, I would also like to highlight in the chapter one, uh, you will see the regional outle outreach on this page. Uh, and our other colleague, uh, Kevin Graves, is our local interagency network coordinator, and he's going to be following up as soon as we're done with the California benefits on his roles and responsibilities. So let's talk a little bit about the California benefits. Um, this is where our most popular benefit that we get questions and phone calls and uh, information about this all the time is the college tuition fee waiver for dependents. Uh, this, this plan is a wonderful benefit for the dependents of veterans who have a service-connected disability rating from 0% to 100% from the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs. Uh, it, it, there's four plans available, plan A, plan B, C, and D. C and D cover uh, Medal of Honor winner and um, POWs, uh, missing in action and things. If you have, or Purple Heart recipients, and if you have a 100% service-connected disability, you can be eligible or your vet dependent will be eligible for plan A. Um, if you have a 0% disability rating from the VA, they can be eligible under plan B. There are some differences on the eligibility requirements to meet the, the benefit. You, the, under plan A, there's an age limit for the dependent. Uh, and under plan B, there's an earning limit for the dependent or the student. So you just look through on our website what the college fee waiver limitations and eligibility requirements are for the dependent. Uh, the dependent does has to be the resident requirements for the school, but the veteran does not have to live in California. So that's a big question that we get all the time. The other uh, benefit that we like to talk about that's popular is the veteran designation on your driver's license. Uh, this, de this benefit enables you to have a veteran stamped right on your driver's license so that you do not have to carry around a a DD form 214 or any other documents that you want to safeguard, but still get benefits as being a veteran and recognized as a veteran. Uh, you can get your 10% discount at uh, retail outlets and retail marketplaces where they offer that. Uh, so it's a nice way for you to show it and, and get that access. Uh, how you would access this is you would contact the county veteran service office in your neighborhood or your county where you reside. Uh, take your eligibility form, your DD-214, that shows you are a veteran, and they will provide you with a VSD-001 form, which verifies your eligibility, and you take that with your application to the DMV to have that designation put on your driver's license. I believe they just passed a bill to have that $5 fee waived for veterans at the DMV. I'm not sure if it's been implemented or passed yet, but we'll we'll see how that rolls. Uh, the motor vehicle registration fee waiver uh, is specifically for veterans who are service connected uh, at 100% and have mobility issues. Uh, they would need to have a doctor's note uh, on their form registration to 256A 
um, and they they would need to take that to the county veteran office to have that verified as well with their doctor's signature. And then once they have all the application completed from the county office, they would go to the DMV and fill out the paper, fill out that application there and apply for their registration fee waiver. The reduced fishing and hunting license, uh, these are pro provided from the uh, California Wildlife uh, Department. Um, and you can apply through their website for these. You would need to provide them with some uh, verification. So you may also need to talk with the county veteran officer to find out what form you need to, to verify that as well. Uh, the disabled veteran property tax exemption and the business license exemption. Uh, these require 100% service connected disability as well. Uh, but you would need to talk to your specific county as to what exemptions you'd be eligible for. Each county has your tax assessor uh, or your county city or license office where you would, where excuse me, where you would file those claims. Uh, they could provide that information for you at the county where you reside. Um, our other divisions that we want to recognize are home loans division. Our Calvet home loans are one of the one of the best in the state. Um, they have a wonderful insurance policy, and we have a great, uh, we have a wonderful person who is a, a contact there, it's Brad Pedersen for the Calvet Home Loans, and he could be information, or you can go on our website and do apply now, and somebody will contact you on the home loans. Um, our Calvet Women's Division and our Calvet Minority Division are unique divisions that provide um, advocacy and outreach to the underrepresented divisions of the women and minorities, uh, and they provide one-on-one -on -one for them as well. Uh, the CalVet Home Loans for Long-Term Care, uh, we have eight homes throughout the state of California for our aging veterans that take wonderful care of them, skilled nursing facilities, as well as independent living, and they even have uh, memory care units and geriatric care units as well. Our Calvet cemeteries are beautiful locations for our final resting places for our veterans. Uh, we have one in Seaside, there's one up in Igo and Redding, and then the third one is attached to our Yachtville Veterans Home in Yachtville. So that is what our California specific benefits cover. Each one of these has eligibility requirements on their own. Uh, you can access this, all of this information from our website. Uh, at CalVet under the California Specific Benefits Module 5. Uh, if you do have questions, you can contact any one of us here at CalVet about these and we can go into more detail and we can also answer some of the questions at the end about these. So other common websites you may be interested in understanding is the VA. Uh, I know that the eBenefits website is about ready to change. They're trying to mitigate away from the eBenefits to manage your benefits and use just the MyVA. Uh, so that's what this page would look like, the new portal that you're going to start seeing for managing your, your VA healthcare and uh, benefits pages. The My Health EVET, uh, this is a great benefit or a great website for you to access and manage your doctor's appointments through the VA, your pharmacy, you can send a message to your doctor as well as access and upload and download records, your health records. So it's a really unique tool to make appointments as well. Okay, so we'd like to stay, like I mentioned, to stay continued support for you, each of you. So we'd like to provide a non-DOD email for CalTAP. Excuse me. Um, you can access, uh, register that through our MyCalVet on our homepage. And you can also add our uh, veteran services on social media from the QR codes to the right. You can attend webinars like this. Uh, and you can also fill out our survey. You can see the QR code there to the right, as well as the link below. Uh, we do encourage all of you to take a look at our survey because we value that feedback. And we take that feedback to improve our webinars to provide that continued support for you and what you're looking for in these webinars. So my CalVet on our homepage, this is where you would go to register if you have not already. Uh, I do encourage you to register for my CalVet because you can filter out the request on what kind of information that you want feedback from, what benefits you're looking to access and stay updated on any new coming legislation or bills that may affect the benefits that you're interested in. 
And also you can be signed up for our monthly newsletter from CalVet of Veteran Services. Uh, you can see the picture of our Veteran Services Sec Deputy Secretary Keith Boylan, and he provides a monthly message as well as covers topics for the month. And then you can also access uh, upcoming webinars that we focus on the topics of the month. So you can see there on the right-hand side of the page are webinars that will take you directly to our Eventbrite where you can register for those, those webinars uh, for various events. And this is my contact information, my email, uh, as well as our 800 number. Uh, you can also access that from the homepage on our our veteran resource book as well on the back page, and then our links to our social media pages as well. So I would like to thank you for your time, and I'm gonna turn this over now to our local interagency network coordinator, Kevin Graves, and he's gonna tell you about his roles and responsibilities, what he does. And I think he's also gonna follow on with our San Mateo County Veteran Service information as well. Thanks for joining us, Kevin. Welcome. Uh, I just want to turn a little light on there. Now I'm all shiny. Hi, good, good morning, everybody. Good to see or good afternoon. Good to see everybody uh, virtually here today. Thank you for coming. Uh, let me um, go ahead and go to the next slide. I'll tell you a little bit about what we do as links. So we are your link to CalVet. We're, we do outreach. So we're out in, uh, in our regions meeting with uh, different organizations, uh, with the uh, Veteran Resource Center, so, uh, where we can also with our county veteran service offices and other for-profit, non-profit agencies uh, that serve the different regions that we serve. We've broken it up into eight regions, um, some by geographic, some by population. And this map will show you where everybody in the state is located and what their contact information is. This may be valuable to you because as a veteran, you have friends that are veterans and they may live in Imperial County and wonder, well, who do I contact? Well, this map here will tell you who the link is in every uh, region with throughout the state of California. Uh, can I get the next slide? So our, our, our mission is this, um, is our primary mission is to provide outreach to the service members, veterans and their families. We wanna be there to help guide you through whatever challenges you may be having with regards to reaching certain resources and benefits, explaining them to you the best that we can or getting you to somebody that can explain them to you. So, um, we uh, make direct referrals uh, to organizations within our region that may be providing benefits and resources that you may need. We assist with local emergencies where um, whenever there's a fire, civil unrest, anything like that, where there's going to be a, a local, oh, not civil unrest would be for my other job. This would be strictly with regards to emergency services that may be provided by the state because of something that happened with regards to floods, fires, that type of thing. When they set up a local assistance center, um, we will get dispatched to that location uh, and be there throughout the, the, uh, the time uh, of the emergency to provide veteran-specific resources to veterans that may have lost their homes, may have lost their DD-214s, might have had to evacuate. Like in Santa Rosa a few years ago, they evacuated so quick they couldn't even grab their hearing aids, that type of thing. And then we also provide leadership and advocacy within the community. We meet with community partners, whether they be political or otherwise, to make sure that they understand the benefits of having veterans living in their community and um, the importance of employing and recognizing and honoring the veterans that live within their community. Can I get the next slide? So we partner uh, earlier, Kirk talked to you about some of our sister agencies and actually some of our e either in-house agencies or sister agencies when, with regards to employment. We rely heavily upon the EDD, uh, the America's uh, Job Centers of California that, that uh, are throughout the state. In, there's many, they have many offices and they have veteran specific employees who work only with veterans to provide, uh, to help you find a job, or they find vet, uh, vet, they find uh, employers that want to hire veterans and try to connect those two together. So there are veterans, I got a call the other day from a guy that says, hey, we wanna hire some veterans. And so we put them in touch with them. And um, there are a lot of employers that understand the value uh, that you bring to the table and look specifically for that. So they try to, to search out those, employers as well as help the veteran put together uh, a resume and help them weave their way through the employment process. Um, we uh, also uh, sister with, uh, I'm going to be talking in depth a little bit later about the County Veteran Service Office. Uh, every county has one. Uh, there's 58 counties in the 
state of California, 56 have county veteran service offices. And that's, they're kind of our boots on the ground. And uh, I'll go into some more detail on that uh, in a few minutes. Um, and then, uh, of course, we partner with uh, the organizations that, that Kirk talked about earlier, and that's what I like to call our big brother, and that's the federal VA and um, the VBA, VHA, and NCA. Uh, and we partner with them to help veterans weave their way through that, those challenges that you sometimes might have with regards to reaching uh, out to the VA, and also um, uh, we have an, we have a whole team of individuals that handle the appeals. If a, if a claim has been denied, we have a whole team in in all three of the regional offices in California that provide that uh, that advocacy. Also, can I get the next slide? Oh, that's it. There's my contact information. That's my work cell phone number. Uh, it's uh, I prefer a nine to five type of thing, but if you got a problem, give me a call. Uh, also, um, either one of those email addresses work. They, they both go to the same location. Uh, and um, feel free to reach out if you have any specific questions. I don't have all the answers, but I'll surely do the best I can to help you find uh, the answers you're looking for. And I think what we're going to do is move on, yes, to the County Veterans Service Office. Ed was not able to send a representative or be here himself today. He usually is. These are his slides. So I will do the best to go through them uh, and explain them as I see them. So uh, our benefits are broken down this way. At the top, of course, you have your federal benefits. And these are mostly financial benefits that you're going to see as a veteran, because when you were in the military, you worked for Uncle Sam. You didn't work for Uncle Gavin. I think he won the election. Um, and, uh, and so most of your financial benefits come from the federal government. But the state has recognized that we have 12% of the veterans in the, in the entire country living in the state of California. So 20 or so years ago, they established uh, the Department of Veterans Affairs. And so we try to do the things that we're talking about with you today, provide advocacy, provide programs, the college fee waiver, license plates, these things that recognize your service and, 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 and thank you for what you've done uh, and, then, and support you from a state level. Um, and then, uh, then our county uh, veteran service offices that uh, is mandated by legislation to provide a county veteran service office, and they're the boots on the ground for us. If you uh, want to have your college fee waiver filled out for your dependent, uh, they would be the ones that would certify your eligibility. Same thing for license plates, driver's license, because we can't have an office in every county. The county already has offices there, so we fund them with a with subvention funds that helps fund their office, and then they do that kind of boots on the ground work for us. And then, of course, you have your count your your regular VSOs, the ones that also are, can be very helpful. The, the nonprofits and for profits, uh, an example of some of them are listed below there uh, that also provide benefits and resources, connections, that type of thing for for veterans. Can I get the next slide? Briefly, the VA is broken. I mentioned this earlier. It's broken down into three departments: VHA, VBA, and NCA. Um, they're described here. I'm not going to read those to you. You guys can get a take a brief glance at that, but it makes sense how they're broken out. One is strictly your health benefits. One is your compensation and your uh, benefits that may come to you because of things that happened while you served, uh, a claim that you filed, as well as um, uh, the the national cemetery administration, which handles, obviously, uh, uh, end of life issues. Um, we've gone through almost everything that's on this list here, so we're going to go to the next slide. Provides veterans and dependents free benefit information, assistance, and counseling. That's important because there's a lot of advertising that goes on. Hey, I can help you with the claim. I can help you with this. By law, nobody's allowed to charge you for that. They're not supposed to. They do, and they get away with it. We do something about it when we can, but but the County Veterans Service Office provides at no charge these services paid for by your by you, us, the taxpayers, to provide these services for you at no charge. We also uh, have uh, some influence over the training that goes into these into our County Veterans Service Offices. So we have confidence that they're giving you information that's accurate. There's no ulterior motives. There's no other agenda. They, they're doing it. They're getting paid to do it by somebody else. And so there's no motivation there. Um, this tells you how successful our CVSOs have been uh, in, in, a, in a 
attaining fe- um, uh, benefits for veterans in 2020. Uh, and that's an important number for several reasons. One is that that's money that you earned when you served, if you have a service-connected disability. Um, that's It also means it brings that much money into the economy, which uh, helps everybody, especially in these times, to, uh, to have uh, money to spend and money to support local businesses. And so um, we're really proud of our county veteran service offices and the ability they have to successfully file a claim on your behalf. Next slide, please. Here we go. I'll let you guys read through this. Counseling, they do some of the same stuff that we do. We work hand in hand with our county veteran service offices. All of us have relationships. There happens to be 10 county veteran service, 10 counties I serve. I have relationships with those guys and I'm constantly referring people to them. Um, we talked about DIC is important. That's something that, that, that they can file a claim on your behalf, claim and comp, all these things here. Records request. I noticed it in the chat earlier. I was kind of browsing through there. Somebody was asking about how to get their DD-214. Contact your county veteran service office. They can help you file the claim. You can also go to the National Archives. There's a, there's a, there's a, a link there for veterans, and you can apply for yourself. Be forewarned. Don't set your expectations too high. There are probably six, I don't know, Keith, Kirk may know better than I do, but they're at least six months behind in getting out DD-214s. It goes back to pre-COVID and then COVID, and now they're trying to recover. Um, there are a couple of exceptions for that. Uh, if you're trying to secure a home loan uh, or you have some other uh, burial benefits and that type of thing, there's some exceptions where you could expedite a DD-214, but you would talk to your CBSO about that because they will know how to, how to go about doing that. Discharge upgrades, and we've talked about these things. Uh, and the veteran's designation uh, on your driver's license as well as uh, license plates. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is not my forte. This is this is why I refer people to the county veteran service offices. So uh, I'm just going to kind of let you guys go through this. Um, I'm uh, the important thing to know that is that you have there has to be a nexus between whatever it is, the ever, whatever condition you currently have and your service. And that can be done in many different ways. It can be done through medical records. It can be done through current diagnoses. It can be done through pre presumptive conditions. There's a lot of different ways to get to that nexus. Go see your CVSO. This is what they do. Next slide, please. I just, uh, uh, I, this is this is that nexus that I'm talking about. You have to have, it has to be have something that happened during military service uh, although it can be exacerbated by and, and be causing a current condition that it didn't have at the time. But again, that's uh, something that uh, there's a lot of uh, going to the doctor and a lot of, uh, of appointments that can go into these types of claims. Um, but the County Veterans Service Office will guide you uh, down that road and tell you exactly what you need to file a successful claim. Next slide. We'll see what this one says. Next slide. Um, okay, so this is just a flow chart, and I have seen this many times before. This is a flow chart. It's very nice. I don't know if Ed put this together or if, if, if they're put together by our CBSOs, but uh, excuse me. Um, but this kind of shows briefly the process you go through uh, intent to file, service record. You got to go to exams, then you got to wait. And there's a lot of waiting that goes on in this process. Next slide. Uh, oh, okay. So that was briefly what the process looks like. Um, again, you need somebody to help you guide you through, through that system. You can go into e-file. I guess they're changing that according to Kirk, but, and you can file a claim on your own behalf, but really it's kind of like representing yourself in court as your own lawyer. It's probably better to get somebody to advocate on your behalf. Okay. Um, Discharge upgrades are available for all different kinds of reasons now. Uh, conditions that were at one time that don't ask, don't tell that, that was at one time a, a, a law has, has been overturned. And so there's a lot of reasons to go back and get discharge, discharge upgrades, but mostly it's because it may qualify you for other benefits that you may not be qualified for otherwise. So you may not have understood what they told you when you were discharged. And all of a sudden you realize, hey, well, why do I have a general discharge? I mean, it should have been honorable, shouldn't it? What did I, why did I deserve this? And it might, it, it, who knows? 
but the point is, is it happened? Well, um, you need to look into um, if you feel that that was that that's wrong, and uh, then you need to go ahead and and talk to your county veteran service office about discharge upgrades. And there's also some nonprofits that do that some kind of kind of work. Also, um, we can bring the legal process into it if we need to. Um, but it's important that you are credited for the service you performed as you performed it. Next slide, please. Uh, I know this part. Go. <laughs> Within our resource book, uh, there is a list of every county veteran service office in uh, the in the state, uh, and uh, you can go there. There's several there's several places to uh, to find that. Next slide. Uh, you can also find it on our website. If you see there where it's uh, the yellow circle above, you click on that. Next slide. And it will take you here. You can put in your zip code. Now, this is also helpful when you're trying to guide somebody else you're working with out of the area uh, to find uh, the county veteran service office in their area. Next slide. And then you can also call an 800 number and, they, and be guided to a county veteran service office in your area. A lot of the offices now are doing uh, or have virtual offices that they set up. And it was kind of started through the COVID, but it's worked out so well that a lot of times you can do a lot of this stuff without ever having to go into the office. Um, uh, and so you would wanna call before you show up and see what the actual conditions are at each individual. Every county handles it differently and we can't keep track of what policies each county puts out. So please call the office before you go and make sure that whether you need an appointment, what time their walk-in times are, whether you can do it virtually, make that phone call ahead of time. Uh, next slide. And this is the guy you want to talk to. <laughs> this is this is your county veteran service officer uh, for San Mateo County. Uh, those were his slides. So um, don't uh, don't judge him on my presentation. He's a great guy, and he knows what he's doing. And he's got a great office uh, that he works with. Uh, he's got good veteran service reps that really care about you, the veterans. I've known them for a long time. So please take down that contact information. And if you have any questions about any of the things I mentioned feel free to get a hold of your county veteran service office or feel free to get a hold of me. And I think I'm done. Am I taking questions here? We're Perfect. all taking questions here because I was oh. using that as the segue for the questions. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, so um, here we are. Kirk, I'm gonna send it back to you. Hey, Kevin, thank you very much for filling in for the uh, CVSO. Um, Yes, uh, we do understand that there is some uh, uh, little uh, nuances to filing the claims for disability claims and things. So uh, great job in covering that. We appreciate that, Kevin. Uh, so now we're going to open up to my colleague, Jana, who has been diligently putting in these benefit resources in the chat. Uh, I would like to highlight that I did post the uh, PDF in there for everyone to uh, download the PDF of this uh, PP this PowerPoint for them for future reference. So I will turn the questions over to you, Jana. All right, well, um, we've been getting a lot of questions um, throughout the webinar. I've been trying to answer them as best as I could. A couple of them, I'll, I'll need some help, um, maybe from, um, from you, Kirk, or possibly from Kevin too. Okay, so um, a couple of you have been asking, um, I, I know Kirk just said that he posted the PDF copy of the PowerPoint slides. You can also put your email address in the questions and answers, and I can send you, I can email it to you afterwards as well. Uh, if you can give me maybe no longer than about 30 to 45 minutes after this is over, I'll get an email to you. Um, and then the question about um, getting your 214, Kevin, um, I had answered that. And then Kevin also um, answered it too um, verbally. And he said everything that I did. So I'm really glad I answered that correctly. Um, but then also somebody um, posted some more information that you can print it at your own convenience. I'm putting in the chat. Um, the website that you can go to. I haven't been to this um, website and I'm really excited to go to it and see um, how we can print our 214s. So um, if um, thank you so much for the person that posted that. Um, that way we can add that to our contact list as well. Um, I see another email address that just came through. Okay, so here's a question. Um, if Kevin or Kirk, if you know the answer to this, that'd be great. Um, or even um, Gina, Kathleen or Lauren too. So um, it reads, uh, we also need help with and I don't know if this is an acronym for something that I'm not aware of, but it's um, C-H-A-M-P-V-A, CHAMP VA, as there is no online enrollment and processing applications is taking nearly a year 
for our 100% P&T veterans families who are in need of this important health insur in insurance benefit. Yeah, that's the CHAMP VA. That's for civilian health and okay. uh, military uh, health care benefits for dependents uh, and one for retirees. So I think this is probably going to fall under maybe uh, if Kathleen may want to chime in here. She's the health care expert for the VA. Uh, I think she would probably give a better answer than I could since this is a VA healthcare question. Um, I would like to advocate that CalVet is not a healthcare resource, so we would defer to the VA for any healthcare questions revert, related to CHAMP VA. Yeah, so CHAMP VA is, if, uh, just for clarification for people, is a benefit that if a veteran is 100% um, service connected, permanent in total, their dependents, uh, spouse, and kids to a certain age can get CHAMP VA. Um, there is an application that's online. There's also a phone number that, um, that you can call to check in on applying for it. They can assist you with it. And I can put that in the chat, um, but also feel free to email me. I'm right on the bottom of this um, contact and I can kind of guide you through it. You know, there's a pretty extensive PDF for just outlining CHAMP VA benefits, but there's a little section on um, how to apply for it. And I've definitely assisted some people with trying to navigate that paperwork. So um, for whoever asked that, please email me. Um, if you get to me today, I will definitely respond and get the ball rolling with you to just try to maybe navigate that. Um, and like I said, I'll put the phone number that CHAMP VA specifies um, into the chat. That way you have that available as well. And uh, just on the side, if anyone has questions about VA healthcare benefits, also applying for them, um, how to navigate the VA, I am also happy to help with people, um, help answer questions about that as well. So again, um, feel free to either ask questions here or you can email me directly at my um, VA um, email. Great, thank, thank you. you so much, Kathleen. Sure. Um, I see more email addresses are coming through, so I will um, um, I'll be able to send you guys all that stuff. Um, just going through what new questions came through. Um, where do you go to find out about what tuition assistance benefit exists for dependents? Or, oh, it looks like, um, oh, go ahead. Um, Kirk, would you like to take this uh, for dependents with a vet with 30% disability? <laughs> go yeah, ahead. Uh, that would fall under CalVet, uh, the CalVet mm -hmm. College Tuition Fee Waiver for Benefits under Plan B. Uh, you can actually go to the CalVet website under the, either the CalTAP or the Education tab on CalVet uh, <clears throat> and then look at the College Fee Waiver. Under the Plan B, your dependent would be eligible as long as they meet the requirements for their earning threshold. Um, there is a requirement for earning limit for the dependents, which is right around the national poverty level. It's very low. It's around $14,000 a year annually from their previous year's earnings. So I think they're trying to get that changed, but we'll see what happens. And in, in the meantime, uh, it, they have to keep that under $14,000 a year, otherwise they're not eligible for the fee waiver, but 30% you would be uh, under plan B. Okay, let's see, go ahead and that one out. Um, okay, I tried requesting from the archive website, but I got an email that they didn't have the 214. Okay, and they're referring me to Navy Command. I'll try um, calling your calling the CVSO as you suggested. Is there anything else I can do as a follow up? Um, do you guys know if there's anything else for follow up with that other than archives or CVSO? If you've applied for VA healthcare at one point, or if you're in that system, um, they sometimes scan a copy of your discharge papers. Um, yeah. That's not always consistently happening, but I've definitely had a few veterans find their DD-214s within their um, health records at the VA. And, and, and also through the and also the CVSO has scanned your records. Mm -hmm. If you have a claim with the, with that that the, the CVSO, uh, oh, even if it was in a different county, has helped you with the one here can get into those records. They have, we don't have access to those, but they do, and they mm -hmm. may be able to find a copy of your DD two fourteen. It may not be the copy because there's like a copy three and a copy four. Some are required for different things, but at least it would get you a copy of your DD two fourteen. And again, if it's an emergency, get a hold of your CVSO and the 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 
VA is making exceptions for specific items that you may need it for. Again, home loans, burial benefits, that type of thing, where, where there's a time constraint that, that, that you're trying to meet. Okay. Um, recommendation on website and or scholarships for military dependents besides CalVet fee waiver. Um, this does not cover room and board and besides GI Bill. Um, so, I mean, I can start on this and then if anybody just wants to- in the chat. Oh, fantastic. Uh, this one is a oh, this, for the U.S. Veterans Magazine. Uh, it's a non-government magazine. Uh, scholarships across the nation for veterans, spouses, and dependents. Uh, it gives a whole list of scholarships available for a, a variety of things. You just have to do the legwork and research what scholarship you may be eligible for and how to apply. Uh, some of them are like based out of Florida, but there are some national ones as well. It's a really nice list. Great. Just copying and pasting uh, email addresses in here. Um, try to get where some of Okay. Um, so somebody uh, message. You can also access your 214 the same way you log into eBenefits via DS login. Uh, Kirk, you want to jump on that one too? Yeah. Okay. Um, the eBenefits DS login. I think it does depend on. Um, Hmm. If you already have a claim or an account, you have yeah. to have an existing account with the VA to be able to access that DD-214. So at one point, you would have had to provide that information from that DD-214 to the VA for them to have that record on file for you. If you have never filed a claim before in your life, you exited the military, uh, the VA doesn't have those records. Um, you're going to need to provide a copy of that to them. Even if you go into eBenefits and create an account, they won't have access to it. Hey, I just let, let me can I add something here, Janice? So there's been some, some confusion about the the link for the uh, for the resource book. Uh, you know, you go to calvet.ca.gov. Yeah. If you go to the main page. Make sure you scroll through that whole page because there's resources at the bottom of that. I think that's where the resource book might be located down there. But you can also go to our web, our, our homepage and find a PDF copy of the resource book as well. If for some reason you find a link that's not working. Oh, so it sounds like, oh, Kathleen, it sounds like you're um, helping this person. It's um so I'm going to let you take on that. Um, okay. So um, I'm a retired military and engaged to be married. I'm retired military and engaged to be married. Where should I go to find info for healthcare uh, comparisons for my soon-to-be spouse, spouse, e.g., VA versus Tricare, etc. Um, so, Kathleen, I mean, you probably know. So I, I imagine, do you know about the healthcare comparisons, or would you be able to? I feel like that would be your bread and butter here but she's also typing oh, another sorry what was the question oh so um the person is wanting to find out um information for healthcare comparisons for a soon-to-be spouse and they're the retired uh they're retired military and they're engaged to be married um, so they're wanting to find out um information you know va versus tricare something like that yeah, I mean, it's a good question. I don't know that you necessarily have to choose one or the other. You, I mean, if you're in, if it's for their spouse, then that's a different question. Um, spouses likely won't be eligible for VA healthcare. If it's for the veteran, you can have TRICARE and VA healthcare. Um, you can have both of them and you can use both benefits. Um, in terms of just healthcare in general for spouses, the California um, has a, um, uh, they have a pretty good program called Covered California that does some options. So um, sometimes it's, there's some subsidized options on there. Um, and I mean, it's kind of like, does the benefit work? Uh, are they you're gaining, gaining healthcare through employment? If employment is not an option, Covered California gives some benefits that are a little bit more subsidized health options that aren't quite as expensive. And then of course you have Medi-Cal. So again, there's a little bit of a range there, but if you can email me, um, again, kathleen.mink at va.gov, I'll kind of guide you through that um, 
I think I can probably do something a little bit more succinct on an email to answer your specific questions as you go along. Okay. But, the, you, but just as a ca caveat again, you can, if you are eligible for TRICARE, you um, often are going to be eligible for VA and you can use both. You can access both. You can use them concurrently. There's lots of ways to actually maximize benefits using multiple systems. Okay. Let's see here. Um, so a couple of the questions in the beginning to um, Uh, there was one I wanted to go over. Oh, just just to make sure, um, this was a really good question. I want to make sure that um, nobody else has um, any confusion on this, but someone had mentioned they wanted to know what the difference between the CalTAP and the CalVet website was. And gosh, we have so many acronyms that we use. I'm being the military. I'm sure you guys are all used to that anyway. But um, so CalVet is the, it's the Department of Veterans Affairs, and we're the California version of the federal um, VA, basically. So um, the CalVet website um, has all of our divisions and all the different things that we do embedded in the website, and the CalTAP web page is inside the CalVet website. So um, hopefully um, that makes sense. I know there's lots of web pages on the CalVet website. Um, the CalTAP has our own uh, web page because we have um, all the different information for all the different modules and um, and things like that. So. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to make sure that that was good. Okay, I'm gonna just check questions here real quick. Um, uh, oh. Uh, okay. Okay. Looks like we haven't gotten any other questions. Can Let's... I um can I address one thing? I think I saw something on there that asked about a recording, and I think there is a recording, but oh, I also wanted to give a that. plug to you guys too that I mean, I think if you have specific questions about some of these benefits, that you can reach the Calvet team. And um, I would definitely encourage reaching out to them because they're a wealth of information. But um, but yeah, some of the stuff, especially on a webinar, can be it, the review is quick. And so I think being able to kind of know who to contact, they can slow down the process and explain things and answer your questions. So I definitely recommend reaching out to this lovely team because you will be well taken care of. Thank you so much. And like she said, you can always call us and on the veteran resource book um, on the back of it. So on the PDF copy, it would be the very last page. The 800 number is listed. I know it's kind of weird with this background I have, but there's 800 number um, on there. And that actually does reach um, one of us, someone on the CalTAP team like Kirk or I, um, or um, one of our links like Kevin. So um, we do answer the phones as long as it's, of course, you know, during um, a work day. Um, so, okay. Um, and yes, on that note too, to just expand on that, um, we are recording this. So it will go onto our YouTube channel and then onto our website in the next probably like one to two weeks or so. Sometimes it takes um, the team that puts that all on the website and everything um, just a little longer to put it on there. So and um, we'll get that up as soon as possible so you guys can re-watch um, this if needed. So um, it looks like um, that's, um, oh, uh, someone's asking to post the link to the website for scholarships. Um, Kirk, are you able to repost that? Or I can probably find it in the chat too. Hold on a second. Yeah, it's it's in the chat function, but I can, I can upload it in there again if we need it. Hold on. Perfect. Um, we'll get that uploaded for you. Um, um, everyone that sent the email address, um, I'll get the, um, the PowerPoint sent to you, um, and we'll stay on here a couple more minutes after it's over, so that way, um, if anyone else wants to send their email address. Um, so it looks like um, uh, you can, going back to the 214 discussion, um, you can print your 214 directly from the DS logon or MilConnect. Um, but it does depend, um, it, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not dependent whether you have a VA claim or not. So you should be able to um, go right on there. So hopefully that, um, that does help you guys out. I'm, I'm so excited to go to this website after this to check it out. Um, this is gonna be a, a really great resource. So I appreciate the person that sent us that. Um, okay, I think 
I think that's pretty much it for questions. I'm not seeing anything else um, coming in. Um, Kirk, if you, I know you're going to post something, of course, but um, once you're done with that, if you want to move on, if any other questions do come up, I will, um, I'll interrupt you so I can answer them. Oh, and thanks for- um, No, and we would like to thank, um, you know, all the information um, in any, and I, we would like to also say, um, unfortunately, we, we can't allow people to like provide information if we don't know that it's accurate or not. So we're not sure if, if you do have a correct way of accessing a DD214 through the Mill Connect, Mill Connect or DS login, uh, you can email the CalTAP team and we'll review that. And then we can go forward with that uh, to provide that information as a viable source of accessing the DD214. So um, we do thank you for your information and trying to provide that access to it. So we wanna thank you all for joining us. With that being said, um, I guess we're about, any more questions? I think that, I think you can go ahead and move on. All right, well, thank you all for the questions and uh, very good input. Uh, we appreciate the feedback from everyone and the questions uh, to raise awareness of these concerns and issues. So uh, I would like to put up there, this is our contact information for everyone, uh, myself and Jana, as well as Kevin, and then the CBSO for Ed. Uh, we've also included Lauren Wagner, who is the Res Veteran Resource Center Director for Skyline College, and then also Kathleen for San Francisco VA Healthcare System. So please use that information and that contact uh, that's here uh, if you need to reach somebody in that related issue um, that you're trying to access benefits for. So uh, we have one webinar left for the rest of the month. Uh, um, I do apologize. We have so many in-person events this month because of Veterans Week. Uh, is now Veterans Day anymore, is it, Kevin? It's it's Veterans Week. We have Appreciation uh, Week for veterans, which is wonderful. I love to see that. Uh, but we have a lot of webinar, our web, a lot of in-person events throughout the state of California, uh, and we have representatives going all over the place to the colleges, to the resource centers here, uh, to the D Department of Defense agencies. Um, just out in the public. So um, we look forward to those in-person events, but we do take time to uh, do these webinars as well. We have another one coming up on the 17th for veteran and caregiver resources, which is uh, highly underused. I think we, uh, we have a lot of veteran support and people who take care of our aging veterans uh, in need. So these resources can be very valuable to them uh, as they need that respite care as well. Okay, I'm going to bring up the survey again because we do, like I mentioned, value that feedback. Uh, we want to get your information from you on what inf what resources you're trying to access and how we can kind of like present this information to you in the best way. So we do take this very seriously. So please take the time to fill out the survey. Oh, it doesn't take long, just a couple minutes. So please uh, use the QR code or the survey link here, you can access the survey monkey and uh, fill that information out. Again, thank you all for your service. Thank you for your time and joining us today. Uh, we appreciate all of our veterans throughout the state of California and our nation. So uh, it's a privilege and honor to work for a department that uh, serves veterans like yourselves and provide these resources. Uh, and with Veterans Day coming up uh, on Friday, uh, and I do have to mention uh, my alma mater is the Marine Corps birthday is tomorrow. So uh, Semper Fi to all the Marines and happy birthday and uh, happy Veterans Day to everyone else on Friday and enjoy the, the special day and recognition of your service. <clears throat> anyone else like to say uh, anything before we sign off? Just want to wish everybody a happy Veterans Day. Thank you for your service. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time to come and hear what we have to say. And please pass this on to whoever you know that might need this information. There's a lot of people out there that are hurting, that are looking for resources. We're going into the, into the holidays. And as a team, all these people you see that are presented today um, want to make sure that you get what's coming to you and that we, anything we can do to make, uh, to make things better for you um, but because of your service. So thank you yeah. for, for serving. And that's all I got. Yep. Thanks, Kevin. Hey, um, hey team, sorry, you know, I think one person has a question on here about um, their uh, earnings through the military. So yeah, like there's some sort of issue with it. So I wanted to have you guys address that before we yep. go. I was, that's what I was, I just turned my camera on to get, that's 
getting Kirk's attention. It's like, you're reading my mind, Kathleen. Okay, I was just gonna read this question um, and we can see, um, I saw some keywords here. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to answer it, but um, I might be, who knows? I might need your guys' help though. Okay, yeah. so my social security earnings record shows incorrect earnings for one of my active duty dates. In order to correct the social security record, I need to provide them with my earnings for that particular year. How can I obtain my earnings record for my active duty years? That's, that's so maybe? You here. Oh, sorry. Was it, um, I think it was, was the error on the social security side, the IRS side or the military side? I think you need to, we kind of have to figure out where the error occurred as to how you're going to address that. But the IRS will have a, a limit of, of, of your earnings. Uh, and so will the IRS of your previous, even if it was active duty, you still have that deductions taken out of your of your check. So um, I would check with the, the IRS first. That would be my first place. Uh, if they can't access your previous earnings uh, for that year, uh, then you can contact the Social Security office and see what the discrepancy was. Yeah, I, I might also suggest that they... Um think about um, calling uh, DFAS or like the going logging onto my pay because if there's an error within the like kind of the DOD side, the of DOD it, side. they have to go through their um, kind of payroll and they could probably right. correct it on that. And so I think there's a few yeah. different spots to start. Um, and that's where I was trying to decipher maybe if they know where the discrepancy was actually made. Was it on the DOD side or was it on the IRS or the Social Security side? Because they need to figure out where that uh, error actually occurred. Uh, so wherever you decide to go, I would uh, say that you are going to have to exercise diligence and patience in resolving that issue. <laughs> it's, 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 especially if you have to talk with the IRS. <laughs> Or even trying to get back into the DOD records is not easy. That's true. Yeah, they might have something where um, I think you can create a login to um, to access previous earnings, and that might be through like the MyPay or the DFAS or some one of those websites. But I think you can pull up old earnings statements, and if you're finding an error on that one, you can see like you can see if it happened on. Um, within the earnings or if it just got translated to IRS incorrectly. So I would probably start there, see if you can access some of your old payroll um, like earning statements and they should be able to kind of hopefully resolve it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, do, I don't I don't know. I, I don't think they have them as far back as I served. So <laughs> I don't yeah. know because my everything was like paper LESs, leave an earning statement. So I don't think it's all digital. Yeah. So uh, you would probably have to be recent for that, yeah. So, okay. All right. Well, thank um, you. And then just um, real quick, just one more thing. Um, I um, have all of your guys' email addresses and I'm going to send you guys the PowerPoint um, slides um, and I'm sending it from our CalTAP email um, box. So if you guys respond to that with any questions, there are two of us that um, check that email box every day. Uh, Kirk and I actually teamed up and we had last month. So um, our team is constantly checking that every day. So um, feel free to just email that back with any questions uh, that you guys yeah. ever have. So I'm going to put the uh, PDF in the chat one more time just for yeah. reference so they can have access to it just one more time. Thanks for um, doing yeah, let's see if I can find it here. That's all on my end. And thanks, everybody. Happy Veterans Day and happy Veterans Week. All right, one more. And it's loading. So here I just posted in the chat the uh, the PDF of the presentation, it's the PowerPoint in a PDF format. So you can download that. Uh, and it's the same as the slides. It's just in a PDF. So you can have all the same information for future reference. OK, thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you for your service. Uh, have a wonderful Veterans Day. And I think we'll be signing off now. It's uh, one. 1 p.m. So have a great week.